I love his energy, dude. He's just like all over the place. Just like boom, boom, boom. Super polarizing. It's just like it's contagious. What is up, everyone? It's Chris. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is sponsored by 1907. Check out 1907.com in the description below. A thick, meaty sip right there. Let's not forget about the ASMR spritz. Intelligent Elephant Carbon Coupon Code Russo. Today, I'm going to be reacting to fellow Gorilla Mind athlete, Mark Plummer. Shout out Mark Plummer. Check him out in the description below. But I'm going to be reacting to his video of PCT versus TRT. Why I always PCT. Comment below a collab. I'm smelling a collab in the works with Mark. Mark is one of the most open fitness influencers I've seen on the scene on the come up that is as based and as transparent as me, which is very hard to come by. And I feel like we could do something together where it not look all fake bullshit. You know, Andrew, like influencer dick sucking. I think me and Mark, especially since I'm mellow monotone and he's up here, you know, we clash together. I feel Feel like it make for some interesting content obviously being in the same realm of content as well helps but i've been following mark for a while so if you don't know mark was bouncing all over the place you know his vlog was wild he was competing he was doing tons of flying around collaborating and it seems like he wanted a home base setup in texas and you know this is a new chapter of his life and i am excited to see him compete in powerlifting and not be you know crazy energy 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 output 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 off the rails he is based at home and all that energy will be directed towards his powerlifting so if you're into powerlifting i highly suggest you check that out but he was prepping for a bodybuilding competition he decided to pull the plug on that switch to powerlifting because he is actually a professional powerlifter that gets paid to powerlift extremely strong with his height stature he moves weights at an extremely good range of motion as far as achieving the maximum weight so he is ultra competitive and you know in comparison to him having to be an open heavyweight bodybuilder right he just like he, you have to get so massive i definitely am with him on doing the powerlifting unless he wants to do light heavies which i was watching him prep for light heavies and it seems like you know he's basically sacrificing a lot of muscle he's already above light heavies trying to crunch back down constantly so i'm excited to see the powerlifting and personally him get back into his zen the reason why i'm reacting to this video is because again mark is a very very successful fitness influencer right he's openly enhanced like me he knows that he's playing with fire with these peds everyone gets burned and he's personally going into why he doesn't stay on i'm gonna have an opposing view but overall the general prognosis of this video i highly agree with what he's saying but let's get into it person for the fit and uh obviously drinks on me plus that's going to be paid plus it's just going to be a fucking unreal time i want to get into the main topic of this video real quick which is basically my post cycle therapy now this is again specific to me guys i am not giving advice nor am i telling you what to do i'm just telling you my experience so right off the bat you know mark is super based remember andrew the little TikTok fuck i did who's like russo and you see me on the streets but like to the TikTok fuck you know mark's not pretend to be an expert and mark's already a fucking successful influencer or the tiktok expert whose word is the law and you're a fucking dumb fuck buddy come on my show come on blunt biohacking i love to talk peds with you we can see that mark here is simply stating this is what he does again super based he's not saying he knows everything he's not saying this is my way or the highway he's giving his angle and i really appreciate him padding that when it comes to giving information about the dark side of bodybuilding this and what i've done for the last six fucking years because it clearly fucking works that's it. There's no if, ands, or buts. I've came off and I've done TRT. I've done blood work both times, which as you can see from previous videos, I went over my exact blood work and all my levels have been perfect. Now, I haven't got an EKG for my heart yet, but that is gonna be early 2023. I have this EKG. It's awesome that Mark brings up getting heart scans, EKGs, and I don't really blame him for 
having issues getting an EKG. It's very difficult to get. Basically, you have to go beg a doctor. Doctor's got to be on your side. Got to schedule the EKG. Normally, when you get an EKG, they're like, well, why do you need an EKG? They don't care about you being hyperactive on monitoring your health. They're more looking at it from a, am I going to be sued by the, oh, the big conglomerate because there's no real, re you know, it's just one of those things. So it's awesome that, you know, Mark is featuring, he will be getting an EKG done as I have to schedule one as well. Be booked and we're actually gonna go over my overall heart health from using steroids for the last five years. But in terms of estrogen, testosterone, total testosterone, creatinine, liver enzymes, kidney enzymes, they are all on fucking point no matter what I do because I have this down to a motherfucking science. And I'm not out here spewing some random bullshit, but at the same time, I'm not telling you that what works for me is also gonna work for you because we're all fucking different. We're all running different cycles. Certain people have more side effects. Certain people have less side effects. Certain people have higher estrogen, lower estrogen, depending on the amount that you aromatize from your given cycle. We all run cycles for different lengths. Some people do 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 14, 16, 20, 22. Some of you motherfuckers never get off. So obviously there's not gonna be a one case fits all situation here. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of insights of what I personally do. And if you can take anything from that, then this video is a fucking success. Again, awesome base commentary, right? It is a case by case basis. I've seen people blast <laughs> grams, come off cold turkey, recover their HPTA. I've seen dudes do TRT, boom, the connection with the pituitary and the gonads is gone for whatever reason. It is seriously case by case. That is why, you know, the guruing industry is getting out of hand in my opinion, because there's really no finite data. Every cycle is different. Everyone reacts different everyone starts in different positions as far as their hormonal profile goes. Now, you guys know that I am hella against TRTing. And do I know that TRT is technically a healthier route to go? Absolutely. But I still think that your body producing the natural hormones such as testosterone that it is supposed to produce by itself is always going to be your best case scenario. Now, when I do a TRT, that is because I don't have enough time in between competitions or events or powerlifting meets to fully come off. Now, as you guys know, I'm only taking six and a half, technically seven weeks off from that last cycle going into this powerlifting prep, but I've decided to come completely off everything. And you're probably wondering why. I was prepping for CPA Nationals and we actually did a 24 week prep. And I prepped up until three weeks out until I realized that I was not going to make light heavies and I was just not competitive in the heavyweight decision <clears throat> division. So I decided to cut everything. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I got an invite back into professional powerlifting. So I decided to come off. But a 24, 22 week cycle is the longest cycle I have ever ran in my entire fucking life. I did not want to go into a TRT which again, I'm still injecting testosterone. So my body is saying, don't produce this, don't produce this. And now I'm going back into another 22 week prep because I'm doing the ghost professional meet for like actual money because I am a professional in February as long as I get like the official invite. I got the invite, but I haven't got like the official invite where I've signed on the dotted line yet. So I have to more or less prep just in case the February meet happens and then the actual meet in March. So again, I'm going into like a 26 week prep. So if I did a 22 week prep and then I did a seven week TRT and then went into another 26 week prep, yo, I'm basically on steroids for an entire fucking year. My LH and my FSH, which are your pituitary hormones are just like, we don't have to work anymore. And then when I come off after the powerlifting prep, it is going to be so much fucking harder to actually have my testosterone levels get back to that six, 700, which they've always come back to because I always come off. The longer you are injecting testosterone every single week, the longer and harder it is going to take for your body to produce natural testosterone again. So yes, would it have been smarter for me to do a TRT for these seven weeks? Probably, but for my specific goals, I decided to do a two week PCT. 
Now, a post-cycle therapy is not supposed to be a month. It's not supposed to be six weeks. The only purpose of a PCT of HCG, Novodex, and Clomid. We are going to break this down for dummies right now. All right, I'm going to weigh in my criticisms of what Mark is saying here, right? I can see Mark's angle of, for his ego, he wants to get off, recover his numbers, and overall, he just wants to clean out after doing such a vicious bodybuilding steroid cycle. He just wants to completely clean out, get everything back in check before he starts the powerlifting. And for his sake of his mind, he knows his gonads restarted. He knows that all his markers are in check and that he cleaned house before he starts this other crazy powerlifting cycle, doing strength-based compounds. Again, whole different sort of PD setup for that. My thing is, it is more stressful on the body to completely try and kickstart your HPTA. Two weeks later, if this is a little ass PCT, shut it all completely down. So you're going to stress your body. You're going to cause fluctuations, obviously, trying to restart the HPTA. And the other thing is the critical error that goes around. And this isn't just Mark. I was talking to Andrew that the TikTok kid was propagating this on the Internet. And it's been a battle for me to give the honest opinion about HCG not being a post psychotherapy compound and being a on psychotherapy compound with HMG being superior. So HCG is synthetic luteinizing hormone. HMG is synthetic LH and FSH, the more expensive, you know, the upgraded version, right? So when you're on cycle, like Mark said, your natural endogenous production of LH and FSH is gonna go to zero. Like Mark said, why do the balls need to make any testosterone? It's detecting all the exogenous testosterone that Mark is injecting doesn't need to be on gonads will shut down which like mark said the longer your gonads are shut down they're going to atrophy into nothing making it harder and harder and harder to restart the gonads and in certain individuals the pituitary connection between the gonads and the brain is completely lost which leaves you stuck on trt for life what i'm saying is if you're going to be on testosterone for a long period of time you know this is a lot of stress on your body for really just his peace of mind of his ego that he knows his gonads work again because he didn't atrophy them into oblivion what i'm saying is if he used synthetic lh on cycle aka use hcg hmg on cycle then he would never face his gonads shrinking atrophying they would constantly be artificially stimulating natural testosterone meaning they never fully shut off despite the testosterone being added in exogenously so even though mark was blasting a bunch of shit you would add in that hcg hmg to be like no testosterone don't shut off we're gonna artificially stimulate you the entire time we're on steroids that way when i go back to trt my balls start functioning again because on trt real trt hrt which is anywhere between 120 to 165 milligrams for hrt and again trt is anywhere between 160 to 220 being normal trt bodybuilder trt being 250 a week you can still endogenously produce testosterone during during that time on that little of a dosage, but you're not fully stressing out, redlining, boom, trying to restart the HPTA to take completely over if you're going to suppress it again. My problem with Mark's advice, and this goes for so many people, including pro coaches, gurus, gurus, is that HCG, HMG are synthetic artificial LH FSH, meaning if you want your endogenous production, you need that from the pituitary. You need to restart the HBTA from the brain. If your brain is detecting artificial LH, aka HCG, it's not going to want to kick on. You're basically suppressing the HBTA when you're entering this PCT and it's giving you a false reading of your natural testosterone because you're exogenously adding in the synthetic LH mimetic. Now, he said the right, correct PCT protocol, which would be clomiphene, which clomiphene essentially is a signaler to the pituitary to start making its own LH instead of you adding in synthetic LH that would keep the pituitary offline. It would keep it suppressed. It would keep you shut down because the pituitary wouldn't need to kick on if it detects the presence of synthetic LH stimulating the gonads testicles to endogenously produce testosterone. You're going past the failsafe of the pituitary to restart natural testosterone artificially, meaning once Mark 
stops injecting HCG, his testosterone levels will plummet again and it will be on his pituitary to kick back on, meaning he should use the HCG, HMG, the entire cycle to keep his balls a nice size. I would cut the HCG one to two weeks before his cycle stops and I would switch into clomiphene. Personally, I would do N-clomiphene, which I've made a lot of content on N-clomiphene, which is a signaler to the pituitary to start turning on, crank out your own natural testosterone with the Novodex being there for the negative estrogen feedback loop to keep your pituitary in the state of feeling that it needs to produce more testosterone naturally by secreting its own LH and FSH. This critical mistake that Mark made could be implemented by another individual who never truly recovers. It's basically like suppressing yourself again with this ACG post cycle instead of using a signaler and actually firing the brain, the pituitary to make its own, you're again exogenously adding it in like you were exogenously adding in the testosterone. It's no different. It's just that this is bioidentical testosterone that's being produced by the gonads because you're overstimulating it with the synthetic compound. When you run out of the synthetic compound, you're back to square one. Your HPTA was never on because it was artificially detecting this synthetic LH. Why is it going to produce its own LH? You need to switch off the HCG, HMG, going into your post cycle and use the Novodex and Clomid protocol, personally N Clomid protocol that Mark's about to talk about. Right here, Clomid, Novodex and HCG, not HCG, that's kind of like in its own little ballpark, but Novodex and Clomid do two things. They stimulate your pituitary hormones, which is your LH and your FSH to produce natural testosterone and they help regulate estrogen. That is what it is used for. HCG is very good for fertility and it is also good for stimulating your natural testosterone levels. You are not trying to stimulate your natural testosterone levels for four weeks or six weeks. You are trying to blast that motherfucker to the nines. So it's like, yo, we need to produce. And then you stop everything and let your body do the rest. That is the way a post cycle therapy is supposed to work. So I overall generally agree the post cycle therapy is like the speed bump turn on of the HBTA. What I don't agree with, and this is just bluntly, is that the HCG HMG again should be used the entire cycle to maintain testicular size so the testicles are never atrophied at all. Completely erasing the shrunken balls by doing the cycle perfectly correct, having the right amount of money allocated to do it correctly, your gonads will never be fucking small. That being said you can blast hcg hmg at the tail end while you're on cycle to cause that holy fuck to the balls what i'm saying is the hcg hmg is synthetic lh that is suppressing the pituitary gland from making its own lh and fsh and you need to cut the hcg hmg towards the tail end of your cycle switch into the clomid AK and Clomid is superior and the Novadex that Mark is talking about. If you continue the ACG HMG into the PCT, just know that you are truly not giving your pituitary the best chance to connect back with the gonads and produce its own amount, right? You're overwhelming it with all the synthetic LH. Why would it want to make its own LH when it's detecting a shit ton of LH already being exhaustively added in, aka the HCG HMG. So overall, this is basically correct. But the big myth that goes around is that HCG should be used in PCT. It should be used on cycle. And if you want to do what Mark said and blast a fuck ton of it right before you get off to really wake the body up, sure do it while the exogenous hormones are still being added in there to overpower the exogenous hormones and to really get the gonads prime it needs to be fucking cut out once you enter post cycle that is where the myth is still propagated around not just by mark but with elite level coaches which has me scratch my head of how have you ever looked at what these compounds are specifically doing if you truly want to restart the hormonal axis the best way if we had mark just do hcg do this all in a cruise this be fine he wants to get completely off see it's all good on his blood work for his peace of mind and completely clean out and it obviously shows how mentally strong mark is by wanting to just be like i want to get off everything i don't need this shit and i'm cool chilling completely off cycle unlike you fucks who are addicted to staying on i don't have to this is no big deal for me getting completely off i see that prognosis and angle i'm saying kind of don't want to have the acg hmg in there and that's my big chirp
work and every single time I've come off cycle, done my two week PCT and got blood work three weeks, four weeks after that, guess what, all my fucking levels came back normal. So again, this is another chirp. When you take one dosage of clomiphene, Andrew, if you take 50 meg a day, the half-life is one week. So it doesn't fully clear until four weeks. That's how much it stacks. So you really can't pull true blood work until four weeks after your last clomid dosage. Otherwise, it's an artificial score on your blood work. Normal. What? What? Like, how? it's because that is the way that it is supposed to be done. That is the healthiest way that it is supposed to be done. Taking Novidex for a fucking month after your cycle is not fucking healthy. Is so I agree with Mark. It's horrible. Novidex is horrible on cholesterol extremely liver toxic and really it's a poison essentially right it can cause extreme liver damage that being said you need it in there for four weeks to cause that negative estrogen feedback loop so the clomiphene doesn't skyrocket your natural testosterone which causes an estrogen conversion which then could cause the hpta to suppress down because it detects too much estrogen the reason why we have the novidex there at a high dosage is to nuke that cause a feedback loop that's constantly keeping the train rolling of the pituitary to make the best recovery but overall it's a dangerous toxic compound that people throw around too generally which i agree with mark it's actually counterintuitive to what you're trying to do even though i had seven weeks left i needed my body to say no we we need to produce this testosterone even if the levels even come to three or four hundred I was happy with that. I'm going to be happy with that when I get my blood work done because I know that my body is still producing natural testosterone and then I'll go back on cycle and it'll just be a little bit easier for when I come off after this meet and I can actually stay off for four to six months. So I- Overall, I agree with the ending conclusion of Mark. You know, it's awesome to see that he is mentally strong enough to just walk away from gear whenever, where 99% of his viewers, in my opinion, who are on gear addicted, can't do what Mark can do. Is it the best play to come off for a short period of time? No. Does Mark kind of admit it's for his ego to see his blood work look good, everything corrected before he goes into another big powerlifting cycle instead of rolling the dice? Yeah, I think Mark's super based in this commentary. The thing that caught my eye as usual is the common mistake of HCG, HMG being added in a post cycle. It should be used on cycle. This is a common error that I see IFBB pro coaches, you know, spouting where it's like, do you know how these compounds actually work? If you did, you know, that you would want to remove the HCG HMG if you're truly trying to restart your gonads and reconnect the connection between the pituitary, aka the brain, the gonads, aka the balls, right? We use the Novadex and Clomiphene and Clomiphene feedback loop to give the pituitary the most optimal environment to want to crank up natural testosterone to try to get back to baseline, which for Mark is around 600. For me, around 600 as well. I never had over 800 natural testosterone, so I pretty much much agree with everything Mark is saying and if he wants to take a legit break and be six to eight months off cycle this all makes more sense him doing this little speed bump is just him kind of like yo I just took a bunch of shit for this bodybuilding competition I want to clean my shit out and then go into the powerlifting in my opinion would it be way less stress on his body of just going into a cruise cleaning out there restoring gonad size with HGG HMG but never fully telling the pituitary to completely restart because you're going to suppress it right back down after that's for you to debate i think this video is good information and it poises a fact of you need to get back to baseline blood work that's all mark's doing mark's very on point with his health he knows that he cannot redline shit indefinitely and that's the overall message of this video and it's completely correct he's not doing anything reckless or dumb the only thing i point out was the bullshit hcg and post cycle i know that my body is still producing natural testosterone and then i'll go back on cycle and it'll just be a little bit easier for when I come off after this meet and I can actually stay off for four to six months. So I did one week of 5,000 IUs of HCG. I split it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And the following week, I did another 5,000 IUs of HCG and I did it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Novadex is a So right here, this is the error 
right? This should be happening at the tail end of the cycle, not into the post cycle. So this is the big error that I wanted to point out is that he is flooding his body with synthetic LH to stimulate the gonads, hyper stimulate them, which should be done while he's on gear at the tail end of the cycle to switch in to his clomiphene and Novadex dosages. The whole thing is, is why would his pituitary want to turn on by the clomiphene? The Novadex is obviously there to clean up this estrogen to cause the negative feedback loop. You know, why would the pituitary want to stay on when it's detecting number one all this endogenous natural testosterone and number two him flooding his body with synthetic LH while he's trying to restart it this should be done right before to plump up the gonads testicles again to bridge into the clomiphene this is the big critical error that he should just back this HCG up and then go into the PCT and then he should be trickle feeding HCG HMG the entire time he's on the said steroid cycles to keep his gonads completely normal size you know he um andrew he made the funny um like showing his girlfriend the balls and they're like raisins you know not being a douche but like my balls have never shrunk ever because i've always spent the money forever five years same as mark and i've always done either clomiphene on cycle and clomiphene on cycle hcg on cycle or hmg my testicles when i go to the doctor they obviously know i might use shit but my testicles do not show atrophy at all because the more you atrophy your testicles schools i agree with mark the harder it is to kick back on obviously you shouldn't be doing hcg hmg in the actual post cycle is my big ass reign of this vid a lot stronger technically like milligram per milligram than clomid so i did 40 milligrams of novadex for the first seven days and i did 20 milligrams of novadex for the next seven days at the same time as hcg you don't run your hcg and then take something else after doesn't fucking work like that. Remember, we're trying to blast this shit in two weeks to have your body do the rest. I took 100 milligrams of Clomid for the seven days, and then I took 50 milligrams of Clomid for the seven days, and then I was done. Say complete, say finish, say see Dora, fini. Or whatever. I love his energy, dude. He's just like all over the place. Just like boom, boom, boom. Super polarizing. It's just like it's contagious. For the fucking Spanish word is for done. Now my body is doing the rest. I've already started to get my energy levels back. I have not really lost any sex drive. Obviously I'm not as like sexually motivated and active as being on cycle, but still I'm having zero issues with mood, acne, energy and sex drive with a very aggressive PCT coming off of that 20, 22 week cycle. For my specific goals and my specific opinion, even though a TRT might have been more healthy on these little seven week gaps in between prep, I personally just needed to do this full PCT so I could teach my body to re-stimulate the hormones and then go into this prep knowing that all my levels are gonna be good, especially because I'm doing blood work again right before I go into that show. But that's just the way that I personally chose to do things this way because it works the best for me. And that's it. So we're gonna wrap. Final thoughts. First off, he did the clomiphene correctly. Big, big mistake that I correct at Russo Lifts is people don't go high enough with the clomid. Clomid is horrible as far as mood side effects linked to suicides and bodybuilding and well, it's a period in a bottle. Point is, you have to go extremely high dosage, which he did at 100 milligrams a day. Personally, you're risking eye damage, but if you are having issues with restarting your HBTA, again, you're pushing actual permanent eye damage, but I know bodybuilders who go even higher than 100 a day to start off. I feel like that PCT should have been a bit longer at four weeks instead of two weeks. He might have already... I know dudes who can go off cold turkey in their shit it kicks back on right i don't know what you know exactly he looks like as far as testicular atrophy is concerned i will say that everything i basically agree with you know he basically alludes that this is kind of for his ego to restart his hbta and be like boom my shit works again fuck all you motherfuckers i'm mark but is it the healthiest way when he's just gonna shut it all back down no right? It's not worth stressing your body out. And this is causing insane fluctuations, but he has the Novadex in there to catch the fluctuations, So it's fine. The whole point of this video, the reason why I did it, besides I actually want to do a real collaboration with Mark and not this bullshit, is that I want to see people stop doing HCG, HMG in actual post cycle. I want to see them do it at the tail end of the cycle. You can do that blast shit. Wake the balls up with synthetic LH two weeks before you come completely off. 
off and then switch into the Cologne Nova. Okay, or maybe a week before you come off, a week after you come off, but that's a false reading, right? Straight up blunt, that's a false reading. If you're doing bloods on HCG, that's synthetic LH, that's not coming from your pituitary. It doesn't showcase pituitary health or that it's restarted or anything. And that is the big myth that I want my audience to go around and correct people because here's what happens. And I'll go into it, right? So I'll come in the DMs and again, Mark did a full PCT. He did not spare no expenses. I know people who follow me in my DM box that just, you know, their dude at the gym tells them to blast HCG after the cycle. They blast HCG. That doesn't restart the HPTA at all. The HCG half-life's out. It runs out. Boom. Cold turkey PCT. They don't know what's wrong. And clomiphene, clomiphene protocol with Novadex to catch the negative estrogen feedback is the way to go because it's a signaler to the pituitary to make its own. It's not synthetic. It's endogenous. It's not exogenous LH, it's endogenous. That will help actually restart the HPTA. The synthetic LH is like a speed bump to wake the balls back up, like Mark said it's not going to help actually restart the HPTA other than bring the testicles to the correct size to start producing the amount that Mark needs, aka 600 plus. Keep that in mind. Love Mark's content. Check him out in the description below. I will see you guys in my next video.